Anthills of the Savannah, a novel by Nigerian author Chinua Achebe, unfolds against the backdrop of a fictitious West African country called Kangan, immediately after a military coup that installs a dictatorship. The narrative explores the themes of power, loyalty, and the complex interplay between tradition and modernity. At the heart of the story are three central characters who were once friends at school and now find themselves in very different positions within the repressive regime. Chris Oriko is the Commissioner for Information, Ikem Osodi is an outspoken editor of the national newspaper, and Sam is the military head of state, who seized power in the coup and has since become increasingly autocratic and detached from reality. The novel begins with a meeting between Chris and the ruler, known to the populace as Excellency. Their conversation sets the stage for the political intrigue to follow, highlighting the tension between those in power and the intellectuals who struggle to maintain a moral compass. As the story unfolds, we see Chris attempting to negotiate the precarious balance between his loyalty to Sam and his own ethical convictions. He's portrayed as someone who entered government with the hope of effecting positive change, only to find himself complicit in a regime that grows more oppressive by the day. His girlfriend, Beatrice Oko, a senior government official, serves as a counterpoint to the male-dominated political scene, offering a perspective that bridges the traditional and the modern. Ikem is the more radical of the trio, and his fiery editorials criticize the regime, calling for social justice and genuine democracy. His passion for his work and his desire to speak truth to power make him a target for government ire, and his relationship with Eloa, a young woman who works at the newspaper, adds a human dimension to the intellectual battles he fights. His Excellency Sam shows a different trajectory. Once a man of the people, he has grown distant, obsessed with the pomp and circumstance of power, and increasingly paranoid. His military government is marked by corruption and abuse of power as he distances himself from his revolutionary roots. As the regime becomes more despotic, a drought in the northern region of Kangan leads to unrest among the populace, and the pressure for change mounts. The government's failure to respond adequately to the people's suffering fans the flames of dissent. In retaliation for his criticism, Ikem is summoned by the Public Complaints Commissioner, a signal that he has fallen out of favor. Undeterred, Ikem delivers an impassioned speech calling for a revolution of values, emphasizing the need for a common humanity over ethnic and class divisions. This speech incites further government backlash. Meanwhile, Chris grows increasingly disillusioned with his role. After witnessing an inhumane act committed by the military police, his crisis of conscience reaches a peak, and he must decide where his loyalties lie. The situation escalates when Ikem is found dead under suspicious circumstances. His death, framed as an accident by the authorities, is widely seen as an assassination. This event serves as a turning point, galvanizing public opinion against the regime and underscoring the perils of speaking out in a repressive society. In the wake of Ikem's death, Chris must go into hiding as he becomes the target of the regime's security apparatus. Beatrice and Eloa the women close to the fallen men find themselves drawn into the struggle, highlighting the importance of female agency even as they grapple with personal loss. While in hiding, Chris joins up with a group of domestic insurgents determined to bring down the government, albeit he remains skeptical of their effectiveness. His journey ultimately leads to a tragic end, as he is also killed, this time during a chance encounter with a police roadblock. His death, like Akem's, symbolizes the high cost of integrity in the face of tyranny. Beatrice and Eloa, left to shoulder the legacy of their lost loves, embody resilience and the enduring spirit of the struggle for justice. Eloa gives birth to Ikem's child, representing hope for the future. As the novel concludes, a coup is staged against Sam, toppling him from power. The cycle of coups continues, highlighting the volatile nature of post-colonial power dynamics in Africa. Yet the final scenes, which include a naming ceremony for Ikem's daughter, suggest a sense of renewal and the possibility of a brighter future built on the principles for which Ikem and Chris stood. The novel's title, Anthills of the Savannah, is a metaphor for the resilience of the people, who, like anthills that are rebuilt after being trampled upon, continue to stand up to oppression. 
It reflects Achebe's belief in the ultimate durability of social structures and the perennial hope for a reformed society. Anthills of the Savannah is a complex examination of the nature of power, corruption, and the role of the intellectual in society. Through the personal stories of Chris, Ekam, and Sam, as well as the women who stand by them, Achebe weaves a tale of a country at a crossroads, torn by the conflicting demands of progress and tradition and the perpetual search for authentic, ethical leadership.